So here we have a diagram and we're told that A, B, C and D are all points on the circumference of a circle which has a centre at O. And we can see that in the diagram. So the centre here of O and the points A, B, C and D on the circumference of this circle. We're told that FDE is a tangent to the circle. So it meets the circle at one point and that's going to be at this point D. And we're asked to show that y minus x is equal to 90 using this information and the diagram. And we're told that we must give a reason for each of our stages of working. So giving a reason for what we're doing in each stage is going to link back to the circle theorems and which circle theorems we've used in this question. So if initially I look at this diagram and look at what I'm trying to get the answer in the form of. We need y minus x is equal to 90. So somehow we're going to have to relate y and x to each other. However, I've noticed this value of 90 here. So maybe I should initially start by looking for a 90 degree angle in the diagram, which could, I could then go on to represent in terms of y and x. So looking for 90 degree angles and thinking back to my circle theorems, I'm instantly remembering one of the circle theorems, which is going to link the tangent of a circle and its radius. So this circle theorem is going to be that the tangent to a circle, so this circle that we have in the diagram, is going to be perpendicular. So at right angles to 90 degrees, makes a 90 degree angle with to the radius of the circle. Now if I look in the diagram we have the tangent here and then the radius goes from the, the centre of the circle to a point on the circumference so this line OD is the radius of the circle and this meets the tangent here at point D. So the tangent is perpendicular to the radius so we know that the angle ODE is going to be a right angle and similarly, the angle ODF is also going to be a right angle in this case. So therefore, the angle ODE is equal to the angle ODF, and they're both 90 degrees. Now, how can I use this to relate X and Y together? So if we have the angle ODE, is there any way that we can kind of incorporate the angle X into this? For example, finding the angle BDE. Now we know that the angle BDE is going to be equal to X plus 90. So if there's a way that we can represent the angle BDE in terms of Y, so if we can incorporate Y into this somehow, then we're going to be finding an equation in terms of y and x. So we have the angle y over here and instantly here I'm trying to look for another circle theorem. So I'm thinking about how I can relate this angle here to this angle here and that's going to remind me of the alternate segment theorem. So the alternate segment theorem basically states that in a circle the angle between a chord, so a point between two points on the circumference, so BD is a chord, AD is a chord, but we're working with BD in this sense, that the angle between a chord and a tangent through one of the endpoints of the chord, so D, the angle between this chord BD and the tangent FDE, so we could work with the angle BDE here, and that's going to be equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So if we're working with BDE, the angle in the alternate segment is going to be Y here. This is the alternate segment. So now I can also say that angle BDE is equal to Y. And that's due to the alternate segment theorem. Now we've stated our reasoning here. And if BDE is equal to Y, and BDE is also equal to X plus 90, then X plus 90 is equal to Y. And we can just rearrange that to give us Y minus X is equal to 90 when we subtract X from both sides. And that is as required because that's what the question asked us to get the answer in the form of.
Now as for how the marks are awarded here, you gain the first mark for finding one missing angle, so that we found this 90 degree angle. There are lots of different ways you can go about doing this question, lots of different angles you can find and work with, but this is just the way that we've gone about doing it. A second mark is for a fully complete method leading to the correct final answer. There's lots of different ways again, so you could have taken different approaches and used different circle theorems, such as the fact that the angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference, and then the opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral sum to 180. A couple of different ways there to go about doing it. But this third mark is for giving reasoning for all of your methods. So for stating both of these circle theorems, that gains us the third mark, but you could have gone about it using different circle theorems in this question. So we're now told that Dylan was asked to give some possible values for x and y. He said that y could be 200 and x could be 110 because 200 minus 110 is equal to 90. So y minus x equals 90, which is what we saw in the previous part of the question. And we're asked whether Dylan is correct, giving a reason for the answer that we decide on. Now, if I'm to refer back to the diagram in this case, I need to look for a reason as to why or why not this could be possible. Initially here, I'm looking at the angle for y being 200 and thinking that this is quite a large angle. So angle y in the diagram is part of a triangle and angles in a triangle are going to sum to 180. But this angle of y is 200 is one of the values that Dylan has given here. Now, we know that this can't be possible because if angles in the triangle sum to 180, y has got to be less than 180 because it's in a triangle, so it can't be 200 in this sense. And that is going to be sufficient reasoning to gain us the mark here. So I'm going to state my answer as no. y must be less than this value of 180 as it is an angle which is in a triangle and angles in a triangle sum to 180 and that will gain us the mark here.